Hey, uh, good day to everybody. This is uh, Agent Carpo, or uh, Carpo's Cult, or however you prefer to look at it. Wanted to make a quick video to try to express an idea that I've been trying to express. It's a complicated uh, idea, but I think it will be simplified by using a prop. This book right here. Uh, the Magic Eye Book. Now uh, you've all seen them with all the pictures where you look at the picture and you move it away from your face and blah 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 and a little 3D picture tape. As a, uh, a teenager, or when I first saw them, I was stubborn. I said, oh I can't see it, and so I never tried again. I never made an attempt. I I've just never even looked at one since then. I thought, well it must be some hidden message swirled in there. I didn't realize it was a three-dimensional, real three-dimensional image. The other day, my wife brought this, brought, found this book. It was laying around somewhere in the house, I guess. And I flipped to it, I flipped it open, and I looked at the introduction, and I thought, okay, so you cross your eyes to where blah, 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 and I, and I followed the instructions and did it right away. Uh, and of course, as soon as I made that connection, all the rest of them fell into place. And I thought, this is the perfect synchronicity. This is exactly when this was supposed to happen to me. Because if I had started to see them years ago, I wouldn't have, it wouldn't have had the implications I had on my current research into uh, illusions, the way that the mind works, and the way that the, particularly the eyes work and deceive us. And so for those who haven't done it, I urge you to try to do one of these. If you have done it, maybe you'll understand this. So when you first focus and get your eyes focused on the point, uh, some people do it by uh, crossing their eyes. I do it by just crossing my eyes until the, they overlap. So when you look at that at first, you don't get much out of it. But when you wait five to ten seconds, and it really starts to take shape. But then something happens. It clicks. And it all appears at once. And you said, how could I miss that? But you wipe your hands past it and it's gone. This in comparison to many of the things that we believe in this day and age, uh, you could go on for years making metaphors with this, but what I wanted to compare it to was the meditation state or the state of awakening or awareness to where when you focus on one thought or one idea long enough, you might start to see a picture, but there will be a point where there's a snap and all of a sudden the whole picture comes into play that point, that snap, uh, can be quickened by psychedelics in the sense that you know within an hour you can be instantly aware of all the things that you previously were aware of but just couldn't put together in the big picture. And I'm wondering what kind of implications th things like these magic eye things really have on the way that we see the world around us. So if we can cross our eyes and make an image appear out of nothing, imagine what sort of metaphoric eye crossings we do daily. Perhaps there's another type of vision where we can see things. The whole idea is we see three-dimensionally because of the way that our eyes are spaced. Forward-facing eyes, three-dimensional view. But if you close one eye, as a two-eyed person, you can still generally gauge dimension of things. But that's only because you know what they are. Now go to a place you've never been or into a room you don't know how big it is and try to gauge without looking at, say, the floor. It's very difficult. A person with one eye, I've heard, can eventually adapt that eye to start to see depth with it. I don't know how it works, but uh, compensate. We compensate with other, uh, you know, if you can't hear, you can see better. Often if people are blind, they can hear better. Their senses compensate for other senses. So, this is why sensory deprivation is such an awesome thing, because you deprive yourself of your sensory organs and all you have is your thought, so you're using other senses. And uh, so I just want to know what other people think about these things, these magic eye things, and whether or not um, you understand where I'm coming from with this whole illusory state. And when you think about projects or subjects long enough, you get really into them. You will hit that clicking point where you see the three-dimensional image. Uh, this happens with all kinds of different different knowledge. I mean, it's universal. Uh, there's, but I guess what I'd say is the things that you can't click on, maybe that's just because you'll never get the full picture of it. There's just too much information. But 
I don't know. I really think that there's something here, a connection between this focal point, focusing long enough and seeing that image, and something like meditation, where you can't just sit down, close your eyes, and connect with the universe. You have to be there long enough, and you have to focus long enough. If you've ever meditated to the point where you know what I'm talking about, you may come in contact with faces, uh, entities, beings, or just ideas, but it takes a while to reach that meditational state, and you have to be dedicated to it. So, uh, yeah, I guess I'll use my magic eye meditating too, but I don't know. It's pretty crazy stuff, and if you haven't, if you haven't been able to see it, just try again. Pretty cool. Really cool. Alright, take care.